how is our relationship affected by our use of will? Yes, well, I, I feel this is the the key ingredient, if you like, yeah. of the relationship. Because while we're not yet perfected in humility, mm -hmm. and we're not yet perfected in truth, and we're not yet perfected in love, there must be something that drives us to want to be perfected in these particular things. Yeah. And in particular, want to be perfected in those things inside of our relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, the only thing that really drives us, it's not like God's there with a chain saying, you must, you must, you know, and whipping us with a chain or whip or whatever. We're not going to have somebody on our back telling us that we should do it. We're not going to have someone, you know, geeing us up and motivating us to do it. So what is it going to be driven by? Well, it's going to be driven by how we use collectively in the relationship our will. Yeah how you use your will, how I use mine. If I don't understand the use of my will in the relationship, then I will not probably do the things necessary to grow the relationship to a place of perfection. Yeah. In fact, I won't. In fact, I? there's highly likely I won't. Yeah. Without my will being engaged, it's impossible in reality mm -hmm. to reach a condition of perfection in your relationship. It's going to be, have to be driven by some pretty strong desires and passions for you to work through the particular issues in order to reach that condition. And it's going to have to be, you, you're going to have to not just sort of be satisfied with codependent addiction out of harmony with love in that place. Mm -hmm. In other words, we're going to only be satisfied with us bringing our relationship into harmony with God's viewpoints rather than our own. Yeah. And this is where the majority of relationships, I feel, fall down on one or both parties, where the will is not engaged to improve the relationship to the point of perfection. And the will is often engaged very negatively, often engaged negatively with regard to the aspect of humility, negatively regard to the aspect of truth, and negatively even regard to the aspect of love. It's often bartering systems, it's often untruthful behaviour, and it's often a very arrogant and unloving behaviour mm -hmm. that occurs inside of relationships and people wanting to hold on to those particular will-based motivations that drives the relationship. And therefore, most relationships have str struggle, pretty much all relationships struggle, yep. and half of them in the world break up yeah. because of these particular issues. So we're, if we're in that situation where we look at our relationship, we go, hey, there's codependence, there's no personal humility, or there's no collective humility. Our track record on truth is pretty poor. poor. I can see there's no evidence of love, or there's very little evidence of love in our relationship. I have to come to terms with the fact that currently my will is being used to avoid humility, to avoid truth, and to avoid perfecting my love for my partner. And so then, can I say that I really want a loving relationship? Well, I can't. Well, I can't. And I have to come face to face with that fact that unless I'm developing these aspects of humility, truth and love, I personally don't really want a loving relationship. I want a relationship based on BART or addiction or whatever else I'm getting out of this relationship. Might be just the sex. And <laughs> I only want a relationship based on that and not based upon the things that bind relationships together, you know, in the long term or, you know, if it's a soulmate relationship, even forever. Mm -hmm. So I need to question my motivation, my desires, my passions, my intentions. I need to question whether I really do want to have a proper relationship and whether I really do want, in fact, for my relationship to grow or am I just very content with it remaining as it is or remaining in a relationship with somebody I don't care for, don't love and are not willing to grow with? Mm -hmm. Is this relationship really just a stopgap between me having sex and not having sex and therefore a stopgap relationship in order to hold me over? for another relationship that I hope will come along in the future. Mm. I've got to be honest with myself about these particular things. If my will is being exercised in that way, 
then this relationship is not going to work anyway. <laughs> you know, and if my will is being exercised to not to avoid personal change and to avoid personal confrontation of my personal emotional condition and to avoid my personal, uh, you know, soul condition, if you like, which is a sum total of all of our experiences, truth, love, humility, and all these other things, and I'm here to avoid all of this, yeah. then I'm way out of harmony with love from God's perspective. <laughs> And, and I'm using my will very negatively. And the only consequence can be a pain and suffering from this relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think we need to start this little section on will with that introduction. Yeah. How we both individually use our will very, is very dependent on, everything very much depends upon that. Yeah. I can use my will to develop the relationship while you use your will to not do it. And we, we have, we, we're in a hopeless situation mm -hmm. for, for there to be any hope in the relationship to, for a relationship to occur, both of us need to learn to use our will to the same intense amount. Yeah. And this is something that I see missing in most relationships. One or the other do not use their will to build their relationship. One or the other has less passion to develop their will in the relationship, less desire to develop their will in the relationship. One or the other doesn't want to address their lower passion or desire to address their relationship yeah. or themselves or their own nature and, you know, faults and so forth. And as a result, the relationship will eventually fall apart. Yeah. There's no hope of that kind of a relationship continuing in the long term. And there's really no point even considering the concepts that we're discussing if the will is not, uh, I've yeah, probably said would, that the wrong way. Yeah, I would say it is definitely a point to me considering the concepts yeah. and me working through my own personal issues, whether I'm in a relationship or not. In fact, I would recommend that any person who's even considering a relationship work through these four points of humility, truth and love for themselves and will. before they, and will yeah. before they even enter a relationship. That's yeah. what I would suggest to them. So there is definitely worth that, but I understand what you're getting at, and that is this point that really the relationship itself mm -hmm. is, is useless to try and establish if one party has that strong desire to do that and the other party has no desire whatsoever to do it. Yeah. And we need to be honest about it. We do. And, and the party that has a desire to do it should not impose their desires upon their other party. They should not manipulate, emotionally force them or do anything else with them to, to get them to change their mind. But you can see that they should probably also not be with them <laughs> because they're going to get hurt well, if they are. And as you mentioned, if the person is engaging with the first three principles of humility, truth and love and working through those issues, then they will naturally come to that conclusion that you just mentioned, which is, Unless both of our wills are engaged, I'm ignoring love of myself here and yeah. I must withdraw. Yes. And you might remain loving that person for the rest of your life and never enter a relationship with another person. In other words, you might know that that person is your soulmate even and never enter a relationship with another person all your life and your love only be for that person. But you still would step back from the relationship until that person has a pure desire to love. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, this is something that is very difficult to do. I see very few people do it on earth. Lots and lots and lots of our brothers and sisters in the spirit world, particularly in the celestial heavens, do this all the time, mm -hmm. where they are continually working with their other halves, their soulmates, working through issues to try and help their other halves get to the point where they actually have their own desire mm -hmm. to work through these issues. Yeah. And once that happens, there's a, it's usually an <laughs> overjoyed response you know yeah. but but until that occurs then you're you're going to be alone the rest of your life mm. and and actually that's that's fine you'll find because once you enter a relationship with god where you're completely blissful it's okay with you to be al alone because you never feel alone <laughs> <laughs> so you know you're not driven by addiction to be in relationship you're driven by the desire to give the gift of your love to the other half Okay, so we've established that this ingredient of will is essential if we're going to work through the issues of humility, truth and love in the relationship. 
and the will must exist in both parties for a relationship to continue. Yeah. Now, this is usually when people panic because they, <laughs> they realise, I don't have will. I can't manufacture Well, you will. know what I find? Yeah. Is most people panic because they feel that the other person doesn't have will mm. when the reality is their soul-based will, this person's soul-based mm -hmm. will, is actually already out of harmony with love with addiction and demand and other things anyway. Yeah. So they're often not honest yes. about their panic. <laughs> There's a lot of projection onto the other party of blame Correct. And for all of the issues yes. and not recognising their own flaws in the way they're using their will out of harmony with humility, truth and love. Yes, for most relationships that have degraded over time, initially there was some attraction. Mm -hmm. And at that point of attraction, one or both parties entered their addictions. And when the addictions is, are imposed upon another party, and this particularly occurs when there's a party who believes themselves to be superior to other, mm -hmm. and I notice many women in relationship believe themselves to be superior to men in the relationship, yep. they then have a lot of projected demands upon the, in this case, the male in the relationship. Mm -hmm. That male eventually detunes from the relationship. He doesn't leave it for other reasons, but he will detune from the relationship. He will eventually have a very low will to address the issues in the relationship because from his perspective, he believes that she only wants everything her way. Mm -hmm. Right? Which? Which is probably true. <laughs> that is how she's using her will by maintaining addictions. Isn't Correct. It? Correct. And she does only want things her way, mm -hmm. right? Now, under these circumstances, you cannot expect that man to develop a will thinking that the woman's only desire is to have him do everything she wants. That is not a relationship that's based on will on both parties. So many of these women then believe they have a will to improve their relationship, but the reality is they only have a will to change the man. <laughs> and have more of their addictions And have met, more of their addictions met. Which is not the kind of will that is required to work through, to actually have a loving relationship. Correct. And the men oftentimes are only motivated by the will to have sex. Yeah. And so he wants his wife to only change with the way she has sex and nothing else, mm -hmm. right? And this is him imposing upon her again, what I would classify as a codependent addiction rather than a true soul-based loving will in order to grow the relationship. So let's go back to the beginning of your scenario there where you say people enter a relationship and often you mentioned earlier, there's chemistry and there's all these feelings mm -hmm. that people often call a desire to love the other person. Yes. So we can't confuse that with actually having a true will to work through issues in a relationship to the point where the relationship is loving. Correct. And many people do confuse mislabel that. that first initial a spark of attraction yes. as a will to work through issues that then leaves them. Yes. The truth is that the majority of the people on the planet have not developed this will yes. to work through the issues of humility, truth and love in a partner relationship. Particularly because it's painful emotionally to themselves. <laughs> yes. And so they don't do it. <laughs> That's the main problem, right? That's the main problem. Yeah. So, so now that we've said that, no one really has this will, even if they've entered a relationship where they think that... When I say no one, I think, you know, there are obviously people who have the will, but I feel, I feel quite strongly that there are many times where people come to us and they say, look, you know, my husband doesn't want to work through his issues. And this is a common complaint from many women who speak to us. Yeah. And what I feel from them is that they, those particular women generally want their husband to do everything they want. And if I was her husband, I would not work through any of those issues either. <laughs> Because <laughs> you basically be working through issues of becoming a slave. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm certainly not going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And he knows that the only thing, the only result of him working through the particular issues the way she wants is that he will become her slave mm -hmm. and he doesn't want to be a slave. So he stays unwillingly in the relationship and in a state of what I would classify as emotional detunement. He, he tries to detune from her emotionally. So he goes fishing and he goes and does other things with his mates and does as many things as possible to get away from her, right? While maintaining a relationship because of the kids and the financial issues and other, and other, and other pressing matters. Mm -hmm. 
this is not a use of both parties' will. Uh, yeah. they, they are willingly, both of them, avoiding the real issues. She is avoiding the fact that she's overbearing and demanding and it has a whole heap of expectations which are unloving. And he is, is overlooking the fact that he's unwilling to be honest about it, not willing to be truthful about it, and actually he's just a pushover. Mm -hmm. And he needs to address that problem because he doesn't love himself. And he needs to address those issues. Now, when he or she addresses those issues, their relationship will look a lot different. Yeah. And in fact, it may go through a lot of upheaval and a lot of emotional trauma mm -hmm. to, to look different. Yeah. But they would be far better off using their will to love God's way than they're currently using their will. Mm. We also see many um, women in particular call us about their relationships and they say, you know, he does this, he does that, he does this, he does that, he does this, so I should leave him, shouldn't I? And I'm saying, what, are you, what do you do? I, I, no, I'm trying and I'm this and I'm... Like, so she's doing everything good and he's doing everything bad. The reality is I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Don't try to convince me that that's true because you're just trying to feed me a heap of crap now, basically. <laughs> Oh, it's just a heap of crap that's in the middle of the room now that you're putting there. <laughs> the reality is for the majority of people, they're in codependent addiction. She has addictions. He has addictions. She has imposed her addictions on him. He has imposed her, his addictions on her. She and he need to develop a will to change that. She thinks she has a will to change it, but she doesn't. She only has a will to change him, mm -hmm. which is very, very different than having a will to change her own behaviour, mm -hmm. right? He wants her to change before he'll do anything, which is actually very, very different than him deciding to do something without her, right? And these are problems that people face with their will. Yeah. So if a couple gets honest, uh, honest enough <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to acknowledge, what you're just highlighting there is that most people or a lot of people aren't even honest enough about the true state of their will with regards to the relationship. No. So that most, seems like... Honestly, most people have, have no faith now. They believe a, a good relationship's not possible. Now it's just a matter of maintaining a relationship of a kind for whatever purposes, whether it be to bring up children or to have some financial security or to have some sex sometimes or whatever the reason is. They're just relate, maintaining a relationship that's not perfect, that's not really really happy. It, it, it might be contentment, you know, to a degree. It's not blissful. Mm -hmm. And and they both basically stay in it, fooling themselves that, that, you know, that's all that they can get. Yeah. So from what you're saying, if we want to actually shift from a place where there's no will-based desire in either of us to actually honour, to be more humble, to honour truth and, and to become loving, we have to get real about the true state of our will. Mm -hmm. And secondly, we have to work through some of those disillusioned emotions, actually grieve through some of those emotions about feeling hopeless about there ever being the, the chance of a perfect or loving relationship. I sort of believe, though, that if a person works through the emotion personally, that they will never be perfect then yes. also the disillusionment about having a perfected relationship will largely dissipate. Yes. And then if they work through the emotion that their partner will never want to be perfect, mm -hmm. they'll work through the rest of them. Yeah. They'll work through the rest of the emotions necessary to get rid of the disillusionment about there being a perfect relationship. So if we get real about the state of our will, mm -hmm. we're willing to grieve our feelings that we can never be personally perfect, especially in love. Yeah, or, or that our partner doesn't want to be perfect. And grieve our feelings that we believe our partner doesn't want to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Now we're taking some concrete steps towards growing this will. Yes. In the right direction of yes. having a loving partnership. Anybody who's listened to the assistance groups in 2014 that we did on the, the talks about will would know there's a big difference between will and willpower and that will to change requires emotions, emotions to be felt. So what we're suggesting here is that you'll have to feel some emotions to change your will. Mm -hmm. And if you don't feel those emotions, you will not change your will. Yeah. Your, your motivations your, will be the same as always. Yeah. 
you're going to have to work your way through some things here yeah. to change your will into a passionate desire to actually grow in love with your partner. Yeah. And it requires a lot of effort to work through those particular emotions. So it's not just a single decision where I go, oh, that's it, I've changed my mind, we're turning this boat around and we're going for it. Well, it could be if you had no emotional impediments <laughs> to that condition. But yeah. if you have emotional impediments to that condition, no, because this human soul operates at a state of preclusion. If I've got an emotion inside of me that, that doesn't allow me to develop a will in a certain direction, then while that emotion exists, my will won't develop in that direction. I need to release the emotion first before I will change my will. Yeah. Right. So, so yes, it requires a shift emotionally inside of myself to shift now for the male in the examples that i've given he might have to shift to realize that he needs to change whether she changes or not yeah right and for the wife she she needs to see that actually her impositions upon him are unloving right from the beginning and she needs to change that and if she changes those particular things he might decide to change he might actually like us a bit more than he currently does right so we start realizing that if we act in harmony with love and we exercise our will independent of the other, then there's a higher likelihood of the other also independently using their will to grow as well. So that's a very good point that you made, isn't mm. it? In the, in the example with the woman who's coming to us complaining about her husband and basically wanting him to change his will, and not examining her own will based oppression really of him of him yes she's doing the opposite of what needs to happen both correct in, with regards to her will yes and in fact if she had had as few issues as she claims to have she wouldn't be there complaining well the reality is if she had as few issues as she claims she has he would probably already be doing something yes and th that's a crucial point that yes. you just made there yes that the once we take personal responsibility for our will within the partnership, yes. this does have an impact upon our partner. It and draws the other will. person into doing the same. If you think about when we first met, my will being fully engaged in developing humility, developing truth, developing love, and using my will to do those particular things with a high concentration of my effort and time, that caused you to aspire to the same condition. Certainly. And, and my suggestion is if your partner is not aspiring to the same condition, it's highly likely you aren't doing it, even mm -hmm. though you claim you are. Yep. Highly likely. The law of attraction works perfectly. And it's very, very hard to, with, to, to keep yourself in a negative place <laughs> while your partner is growing to be in a positive place. Yep. You will recognize the changes in your partner and you'll begin to have the same aspirations as your partner has as a result, yep. right? Now, if your partner does not have the same aspirations as yourself, then it's highly likely that you don't have the aspirations <laughs> you claim to have yep. and you're just fooling yourself and delusional. Yeah. Yes, and we need to recognize that. Good points. Yeah. yeah. So when it comes to using our will, if we go back over the first three questions that we raised, mm -hmm. we need to use our will in those three areas as well. Yes. So a soul based will to be humble with myself and my partner allows me to confront all of the areas we talked about in question one of this session. Correct. So if I don't have a soul based will to actually confront the issues of humility personally, then it's highly likely that I won't have a soul based will to confront the issues of humility in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Perfect sense. Same applies to truth. So a soul based will for truth about myself and with my partner allows me to confront all of the areas that we discussed in question two of this Cor session. Correct. So if I don't have a soul based will, as we discussed in, in session in question two of this session, yeah. and we actually don't have a soul based will for God's truth and for truth itself and for absolute truth, then, of course, it's highly unlikely that we're going to engage the points we raised in point two mm -hmm. in that part two of this session. So therefore, we'll receive none of the benefits of having truth in our relationship. Yeah. Okay, final point. Yes. A soul-based will to love 
allows me to confront the areas stated in question three of this session. So the same applies. If I don't have a passionate desire in myself to change myself with regard to love, then it's highly unlikely that I'm going to be able to change my love-based relationship with my partner. Yeah. And so we need to be honest about these things. We need to be downright like brutal <laughs> with ourselves about these things, really. And yeah. I don't see it as brutal, but a lot of people do. Like, I am very brutal with myself in the average you know, way that everybody sees it with regard to truthful with myself about these matters. Do I, am I really humble enough? Am I really truthful enough? Do I really want to love enough? Do, you know, is my desire fully engaged or not? And I am really, as you know, quite strong on that with myself. You're not uh, punishing of yourself. No, I but don't punish you myself. Are very, very honest. Yes, very honest. Very factually honest about this matter. Do I really have my will developed in that regard or am I avoiding things? What's really going on for me? Now, if I can't change my will, in regard to those first three things we raised in the th questions one, two, parts one, two, and three of this session, yeah. then it's highly unlikely that my soulmate, my other half, the person I'm living with, will change her will or his will. Mm -hmm. It's uh, highly unlikely because my will has the power to draw the other person's will into the same condition. Which is awesome when you it's think awesome, about yeah. it. Yeah. But if I am waiting for them and I'm resentfully going, I'm only going to do it if they do, mm -hmm. or I'm saying to myself, I'm not going to do it unless they do it first, right? which is requiring something of them that you're not requiring of yourself, yep. then you are being very unloving and very resistive to using your will in a positive direction. Right? So these are, I see people engaging this behaviour constantly in their relationships, yep. right? Where they are constantly wanting the other person to do something that they themselves are not prepared to do. And, I, and I'm saying, I need to be fully prepared to do all the f these four things. This, this desire for humility, desire for truth, desire for love. It needs to be passionate in my life and demonstrable mm -hmm. as a passion in my life. I need to be changing. The people around me need to see me changing because if they can't see me changing, I'm not changing. Yep. <laughs> they need to see me becoming more loving. Yep. That's what they need to observe. And if they can't observe it, then I'm probably not becoming more loving. Yep. Right? And once I engage these particular things, it's highly unlikely that my most closest companion, the person who's living with me, will not observe the changes in me. And be drawn towards change themselves. And therefore be drawn towards using their will yeah. to change themselves. Yeah. Yes. Now, eventually, obviously, if, if it turns out after years of this that both parties do not have an engaged will, then you may separate for a time until one or the other party does engage their will. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't enter other relationships if you truly loved the person and if you believed that that person was your soulmate. Right? So you may have time periods where you're alone, or even in your relationship, you may have time periods where you spend time, months or even sometimes years, depending on the circumstances, alone, mm -hmm. while you're working through these particular issues. But the key is to have the developed will yeah. to go through it. Yeah. Because it's only the developed will that will pull you through it. Yeah. Without it, you won't get through it. You won't. You'll give up. You'll go and get an addiction met somewhere else. You'll go and have an affair. You'll go and do a whole heap of things, which will be very out of harmony with love yeah. and cause a whole heap of pain and suffering just to avoid certain things. Yeah, and our entire first assistance group is all about developing and strengthening will to love, isn't it? Yes. So there'll be a lot of tools and a lot of assistance for people to look at this issue of will and sincerely yes. make changes. So this is the Education in Love series that we're talking about that yeah. we've developed for 2016 through to 2018. And the whole of the first six days is all about will. And in fact, a general theme that goes through the entire 48 days of, the, of these cool. discussions yeah. we'll be having with people are actually... It always comes back to how are you using your will? How are you using your will? 
how are you using your will <laughs> and and in a relationship we have the power to use our will for good or for bad mm -hmm. just like we have the power to use our will in the same directions in all aspects of our life yeah. and we're going to require some deep sincerity if we're going to have a perfect relationship in the end mm -hmm. and we're going to both have to engage it whether we like it or not yeah. but in the end we, if we truly engage our will we will like it yeah. we will like the changes that it brings about we will enjoy the growth in the relationship the the closer relationship the the building sexual desire and sexual passion that occurs in the relationship and every other change that builds and changes and grows and passions that grow in the relationship will be a huge source of joy for our relationship if we do it yeah and that's what we need to have faith in because yes. if we don't have faith in that we probably we won't, engage, won't engage our will at the beginning yeah Mm. Yeah. So what we'd like to do in conclusion is encourage all of you to develop these four qualities, which are the same four qualities, ironically, that you'll need in your relationship with God. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> and if you can develop these four qualities in your relationship, then you have a great chance of perfecting your relationships to the point where everything in your life is perfect. You're perfect, your partner's perfect, and your relationship's perfect. And these, per, this place of perfection is possible for you. And we'd like to encourage you to believe and have faith in the fact that God created perfect laws, God created you to be perfect, and God created your relationship to be perfect. And as long as you have some you, strong will and desire to generate this perfected per self and perfected relationship, you're going to greatly enjoy your partner relationships. <laughs> so I'd like to thank Mary for sharing that with me thank today. Thank you, Dylan. And also the guys who are recording us today for sharing our session today as well. Thanks, guys. <laughs>